how to drive sustainable transformation. My 11-year-old self was deeply convinced that the answer to that question is knowledge. I was 11 years old when I first learned about climate change, biodiversity loss, and factory farming all at once. The things that can happen when you let an 11-year-old loose on the internet. <laughs> Shocked by what I found, I started my own campaign. I was deeply convinced that if people only knew how one million plant and animal species are now threatened with extinction, if they only knew how seven million people die of climate change and pollution every year, if they only knew, change would naturally occur. So I gathered all the evidence and facts I could find, and I presented them to my classmates in school. I distributed posters in my local village, glued to the walls of shopping malls and lantern poles. I even made a little movie, admittedly with a lot of help from my mother. In other words, I used every medium available to me at the time to reach anyone who would listen. Naturally, I assumed that they would translate the information provided into the action required. Now, as you can surely guess, this did not quite work out as I had envisioned. I may have brought parts of my very loving family to eat a bit less meat, but that was about it. The realization came as quite a shock to me. Most people know, but do not act. Most people know, but do not change. This is likely nothing new to you, but for me, it was the first time I came across the knowledge action gap. Do you know in the British tube the announcements, mind the gap, please mind the gap? I didn't mind the gap back then, and it tripped me up pretty badly. But at the same time, it planted a seed in me that is still underlying my professional motivation today. A deep desire to bridge the gap between A, knowing about our environmental crisis, and B, changing our societal systems accordingly. In short, it made me want to become a translator. Translation is a powerful catalyst for change that is not much talked about. What I mean by that is translating what large-scale global phenomena such as the environmental crisis, mean to a very specific context and audience. Translating why it matters, not just to the world as a whole, but to them specifically. And respectively, why action is required. In the realm of academia and science communication, this is not new. For example, a team of researchers at the Oregon State University was able to quantitatively show how members of the Republican Party were more compelled to act on messages of climate change when these were translated into the dominant narrative of their party, when these were tied to things like patriotism. I, in turn, have chosen to apply the power of translation to the domain which most directly impacts our environmental crisis, to business. So how does translation work? Well, an obvious first step is that you have to identify the language of the other party. You have to identify their context, frame of mind, and most imminent priorities. Then, you have to do the actual translation. You have to speak their language. 
Let me now exemplify this by switching into the language I typically use in my work as a management consultant. The language of the private sector, of business, of finance, of revenue, of cost. When advising an organization on their sustainability strategy, we typically identify measures through which to increase sustainability and translate these into their financial implications. And in a lot of instances, measures that increase sustainability can unlock significant value creation potential. Let me just list four examples. First, sustainability can result in cost savings. A lot of measures to reduce an organization's carbon footprint save more money than they cost, such as building efficiencies, resource use efficiency, or waste recycling. The company Procter Gamble was able to realize 2 billion US dollars in cost savings over the course of eight years through waste and energy savings alone. Secondly, new sustainable products and service lines can tap into new revenue and growth potential. Sustainable brands have been shown to grow four times faster than regular brands. And 90% of consumers say that they would switch to sustainable product or brand, all else equal. Many global companies are already taking advantage of this, such as Unilever, who in 2018 reported that 70% of its revenue growth came through its sustainable living brands. Third, sustainability can serve as a significant advantage in the war for talent. 75% of Gen Z and millennials say that they value sustainability on par with or above salary in their job. This is likely the majority of people studying here at this university. And it's a trend that is likely only going to increase as millennials will soon make up three quarters of the workforce. And fourth and lastly, sustainability can serve as a key advantage when it comes to fundraising. 90% of institutional um, investors now say that they take sustainability into account in their investment decisions. In my work, we use all this and more to quantitatively translate how measures to increase sustainability can unlock significant value creation potential. But please don't get me wrong. I am not saying that sustainable transformation does not require significant investment. I am not saying that sustainable transformation is easy. And I am not saying that sustainable transformation can only be brought forth through financial incentives. What I am saying is that any case for sustainable transformation can be made much more compelling and thus effective if you also shed light on these additional sources of value. If you are able to show how it plays into their most imminent financial priorities. In other words, if you speak their language. I personally am an idealist and a firm believer in the moral imperative to act on the sustainability crisis at hand. In that way, I have not much changed compared to my 11-year-old self. But over the years, I've come to learn that in order to convince the really relevant stakeholders to act and to drive change, activism with high-level reference to morals and scientific evidence is often not enough, particularly not in the realm of business, where the biggest drivers lie. 
translators have a critical role to play. So let me end with a challenge to you. The next time you make a case for sustainable transformation, carefully think about the audience you want to reach. I challenge you to invest time in identifying and learning their dominant language. And I challenge you to translate your cause accordingly. Let us use translation to become drivers of sustainable transformation in Berlin and beyond. Thank you.